Hi there, I'm Sawyer. Welcome to Real Numbers, the show about solving problems and discovering math along the way. This week, we will continue our expected value calculations with a problem about teaching snowboarding. Rachel gives private snowboarding lessons six days a week. Each day, her student chooses one of six snowboards she has available at random. And at the end of each week, she sharpens every board that has been used at least once that week. On average, how many snowboards does she need to sharpen each week? That is, at the end of the week, what is the expected number of snowboards that were used since the last sharpening? Use the button on this page to submit your solution. All right, let's solve the problem from last episode, which you can navigate to on this page. This solution leverages the linearity of expected value in a way that might help solving this week's problem. We were computing the expected number of in-step rows in the marching band, whose 40 members were arranged into 10 rows of four, and each member randomly starts marching with their left foot or their right foot with equal probability. Well, if x is the random variable of the number of in-step rows, then we know x equals the sum of x sub i for i equal 1 to 10, where x sub i is the random variable that is equal to 1 if the ith row is in step, and 0 if the ith row is out of step. These variables, which are 1 when a certain condition holds and 0 otherwise, are called indicator variables and come in handy when breaking up a complicated random variable into simpler parts. So let's compute the expected value of x sub 1. The expected value of an indicator variable is always just the probability the condition occurs, since, for example, the expected value of x sub 1 equals 0 times the probability x sub 1 equals 0, plus 1 times the probability x sub 1 equals 1, that's just the probability x sub 1 equals 1, or the probability that the first row is in step. There are two ways for the first row to be in step. Either all four students started on their left foot, or they all started on their right foot. The probability of each of these cases is 1 half to the fourth, or 1 16th, since we need the and of four independent events, all with probability 1 half, to occur. So the expected value of x sub 1 is 1 16th plus 1 16th, or 1 8th. Notice that there was nothing special about the first row of the parade, so the expected value of x sub i equals 1 8th for all i, 1 to 10. So now we can use linearity of expectation, since x is the sum of the x sub i from 1 to 10, the expected value of x is the expected value of this sum, and that's the sum of the expected value of x sub i from 1 to 10. That's just 10 copies of 1 over 8, so 10 over 8, or 5 over 4, or 1.25. Therefore, we can expect one and a quarter good photo opportunities as the chaotic marching band parades by. The bonus question changed the distribution of left foot and right foot marchers by insisting that exactly 20 musicians start with their left foot and 20 musicians start with their right foot, but that they are randomly arranged into the rows at the start of the parade. We can once again use the indicator variables x sub i to determine the expected number of in-step rows. Now let's compute the expected value of x sub 1. Just like before, the expected value of x sub 1 is the probability the first row is in step. The first row has four band members. Whichever foot the first player starts with, there are 19 left of the 39 other band members that also start with that foot, so the second member's probability of being in step is 19 over 39. Continuing with band members 3 and 4 of the row, the expected value of x sub 1 is 19 over 39 times 18 over 38 times 17 over 37, which comes to 51 over 481, or about 0.106. Once again, there was nothing special about the first row. Each other indicator variable has the same expected value, and so the expected value of the number of in-step rows is again just 10 times this value. The expected value of x equals 10 times the expected value of x sub 1, or 510 over 481, or about 1.06. Note that in this case, the indicator variables we are summing over are not independent. Whether one row is in step subtly changes the chances that another row is in step. We can prove this to ourselves by noting the following. Imagine the extremely unlikely scenario that x sub 1 equals x sub 2 equals x sub 3 all the way up to x sub 9 are all 1. That is, the first nine rows of the parade all manage to be in step. Then there are either four musicians who start with their left foot or four musicians who start with their right foot, remaining for the final row, 
So under these conditions, the probability that x sub 10 equals 1 is 1. Since this conditional probability is different from the unconditional probability of x sub 10, the variables are not independent. However, the linearity of expectation can still be applied, and so we don't need to consider the interaction of the rows to compute the overall expected number of in-step rows. So the expected number of in-step rows is smaller than in the first problem, when all the marches were independent. Intuitively, this makes sense. When we know that the musicians are split evenly into 20 left foot starters and 20 right foot starters, if we've managed to fit three right foot starters on the same row, then there are fewer right foot starters to complete the row than there are left foot starters to ruin the row. Okay, let's try to compute the expected number of snowboards that Rachel needs to sharpen each week. She gives six lessons, and for each lesson, one of her six snowboards is chosen randomly. And at the end of the week, she must sharpen all of the snowboards that were used that week. Who knows, maybe a clever use of indicator variables can help simplify your calculations. Submit your thoughts and solution below, and I'll see you next time on Real Numbers.